Welcome students to a, a lecture on bar and pie graphs in Excel. This lesson we're going to learn how to do a couple things. And uh, here are those couple things. Uh, first of all, uh, we're going to learn, students will be able to create well formatted graphs from spreadsheet data. So we're going to make some graphs today. Uh, and we're going to learn specifically how to do pie graphs and column graphs in Excel. Uh, and these are two of the most basic types of graphs. They're really important in so many different contexts. So I'm super excited to teach them to you and for you guys to get a little practice. All right, so here's the docket, the agenda for today. Uh, we're going to start by explaining what's the point in graphs? Why do we care about graphs? Why should I even worry about this or pay attention to Mr. Caden? He's just talking about some junk I don't, I don't care about. So what I'm going to argue about why graphs are important. Uh, and then we're going to learn how to make simple graphs in Excel. And lastly, uh, we'll learn how to customize it, change its colors, uh, give it labels, things like that. All right, let's get started then with uh, why graphs. We'll, we'll figure out why a graph is important. So what is the point? Why should we graph stuff in the first place? Why is this something that's, that's valuable? Uh, and, and the biggest reason why is that sometimes a set of data doesn't really mean very much to you until you do graph it, right? Maybe it's just a bunch of numbers on the page. Uh, and, and until you put it in a visual form like a graph, it's difficult to, to learn anything from it. And this is really important. So, for example, let's say you, you're running an ice cream stand at the, at the basketball games. You're trying to sell mad ice cream and uh, you're having some trouble doing that. Uh, and, and you want to know which flavors should you put the most time into making uh, and, and which flavors sh should you buy the most of that you're going to sell. Uh, you can look at a list, right, a giant list of everybody and all the different uh, ice creams that they ate, and, and that, that list doesn't mean very much. But if you turn it into a graph, right, we take all that data that you just saw go across the screen, and we take all that who chose what different piece of uh, ice cream, and we put it into a graph, oh, well, I can see that I'm selling a lot of mint chocolate chip, and I'm not selling very much strawberry. So maybe I should stop buying strawberry and buy a lot more mint chocolate chip because that seems like what people want. Okay? And so sometimes a big list of numbers or a big lists can't mean that much. But when we graph them, we can learn a lot from them. Okay? And that's the point of graphing. That's why it's so critically important. And another reason why it's important that we learn it in school is that scientists, businessmen and women, doctors, pretty much every, every, every position, every job that you could eventually have, and especially the ones that make the most money, you need to know how to read, create, and interpret graphs. Here's an example from the business world, right? Let's say you're a manager at, at Dunkin' Donuts or you do advertising for Dunkin' Donuts. Here's a graph that this is made up, by the way, of the number of, of iced coffees that have been sold by each month, right? So look in January. Look how many fewer iced coffees are being sold in January, February, November, and December. Mm. I wonder if there's a, a reason for that. Can you think of a reason for why that might be the case? Why would they be selling less iced coffees in January and February and in November and December than they do the rest of the year? Well, the answer would be it's, it's cold. In January, February, November, and December, it's freezing cold. And so people stop drinking iced coffees and they start drinking regular coffee, right? And so if you work at Dunkin' Donuts, you can say, hey, maybe I need to have more regular coffee and less iced coffee during those winter months if I want to make the most money. Businessmen are looking at graphs and businesswomen are looking at graphs all the time. Doctors are looking at graphs for patients. Scientists are looking at graphs. Engineers, everybody. And that's why it's really important that we learn it here. So we'll start by learning how to make graphs in Excel. And then uh, after that, we're going to learn how to customize it. Okay, so here we are in, in Excel 2007, and hopefully you've already watched a few lectures about this, or at least the introduction to Excel lecture, so you've seen Excel before. And now here what we're going to do is we're going to take some of this data that we have here and turn it into a graph, okay? Um, and what I have here are the actual numbers from uh, a couple of years ago about the different races of students at PHA from kindergarten all the way up through 12th grade. And if you look carefully, uh, you can see a lot of uh, the different numbers, right? So you have the Asian students, they're about 45. There's a lot of African-American students, for almost 450. Uh, Latino and Latina students, plenty of them, 250. And a bunch of white students, 150 as well. Okay, so how can we turn this information into a graph? Well, it turns out that uh, Excel has some really easy tools to make this happen. Once you have the data typed in, like it's already typed in here, all you have to do is click on the data and drag and select it all just like that. So I clicked and dragged and selected all that data. And then here's the simple steps to make a graph. We go to insert. Then we go to pie graph. In this case, I want to make a pie graph. And then we can pick any of these different options. I like this 3D one right here. And there we go. 
right away we have a graph that has uh, Asian and Pacific Islander, it has African American, Latino, Latina, and white, and it has all the, the different pie, pieces of pie in the pie graph that shows the different, uh, the different proportions of students. And so this is a really quick graph to show us that yes, most, almost half of the students at Prospect Hill Academy are African American. Uh, and the graph visualizes the data. It's super easy. All you have to do, once again, is click and drag over the data you want to do. And then you go to insert. And then you select the type of graph you want from over here. And you, in this case, we're going to do a pie graph. And there you go. Okay, let me show you another example quickly. Here I have the same thing, okay, but I have PHA students by gender instead. So uh, it shows how many males and how many female PHA students there are. Now I want you to be careful, this is important, that you put the data in such a way so that the labels like male and female are on the left side of the numbers. If I make the graph like this, okay, it, it doesn't work, okay, it doesn't work. But it, it's really important that the labels like male and female are on the left side of the numbers. Okay, now if I select them and I go to insert and then I go to pi, there we have male and female. Okay, Excel's super easy for doing other kinds of graphs too. Um, in this case, we're going to do a different type of graph. This is the number of students that PHA has by each grade. Okay, now I can select that information and do it as a pi graph like we just saw. Okay, and there it is. Okay, but that's just not that interesting. Look, what does it show us? Not that much, really, that there's a lot of the same same size grades. That's fine. But what we can actually have Excel do is something a little bit nicer. Uh, we can have it do uh, a what's called a column graph. Okay, and so instead of selecting pi, when I go to insert, I can select column. And then I can pick any one of these different ones. I like these 3D ones like that. And there we have it. Okay, it shows all of the different grades, and it shows how many students there are in each grade. Okay, and you'll notice in this case, the labels are on top of the numbers. Okay, and over here, the labels, the different names, right, are on the left side of the numbers. So you can do either one of those. You can put the labels on top, or you can put the labels on to the left side. Okay, but if you move the labels to the right side, or if you move the labels below, then you're going to have problems. So here, let me put my labels below and try and see what happens. Here we'll insert another column graph, and we're not going to we're going to get something weird with a bunch of crazy title and no bars at all. But if we have the labels on top of the numbers, like I have right here, then I can do it, and it's going to come out looking just fine. All right, so that does it for learning how to do the graphs. Let's turn them into our own nice graphs and change their colors and their properties. All right, so it's time to make this thing look look a little bit better and, and, and show this type of data that we want to show. So how could we do that? Um, every graph that we select, we can change all of its properties up here in the window. When we first click on it, you'll notice that um, up in the top here that we're taken to the Design tab. Okay, And there's lots of different options here. We can change the colors if that's what you like. You can change it to multicolor or one single color. And there's all sorts of options if you scroll down here. You can see all different things with the black background, whatever you like. Okay, but more importantly, what we can do over here is we can choose one of these templates for putting more information on this graph. So, for example, I can choose this one, and it puts the actual percentages on the graph, and it also gives me a place to add a title to my graph. So I can do a title up here. I can type, uh, you know, what is this? This is PHA students by race, right? All the different races of the students, and I want to go back to this color because I like it better. Okay, and that makes my graph look more professional, right? I could put this in the newspaper or in a book instead of uh, just, you know, some junk that you hand in with, a, with a, a bad paper. Okay, and now it looks good. So we can change the colors up here. We can change any of the, the, the way the thing looks. We can use this one. We can use this one. Okay, but it's always nice to have labels on your graphs, right? So it's good to have a title. Similarly, uh, over here on our in our bar graph, we can do the same sort of thing. You notice sometimes when you make a bar graph, you'll get this uh, this key over here that says series one. If you don't want that, just click it and then hit delete on the keyboard, and now it's gone. So just click and hit delete. That's easy, right? And again, in the design tab, when we've clicked the the graph, we can change the colors, anything we want. We can put little outlines on the thing. But more importantly, again, we can add. Uh, some spaces for labels, right? And whenever you have a bar graph, you want to label the columns. And you also want to have a title for your graph. So I'm going to click this one. See, it has two different labels. 
And I can make this series thing go away. I don't want it. Okay. And this is PHA students by grade, so I can put that in the title. And then over here, uh, this is the axis title for this side. So what's represented on this side? We have all the different grades down here, but over here we have number of students, right? So you always want to label your axes, just like in science class, they tell you to do that. That's true all the time. And down here, this is the different grades, okay? And again, you can make all kinds of changes to the way the graph looks using these two different boxes and by typing some stuff in yourself. Lastly, just before we move on, uh, if you click on the Layout tab, once you've clicked on a graph, you can click this Layout tab, and there's all sorts of different options that you can do there. You can add a title yourself. You can uh, make grid lines, right? You can make uh, vertical grid lines like this, okay, if that's something you're interested in. You can, uh, you can add a data table to the bottom that shows all the data, which is kind of ugly. I don't want that. Uh, and so you guys can go ahead and play around with any of these different options that you want. Uh, and, and do anything you want to this graph. It's up to you. But in this design tab and in this layout tab, you can make all sorts of changes to the different options and make the graph look exactly how you like it. You can also resize the graph by clicking the corners of it and changing its size. Wait, choose a different corner. There we go. Okay. And when you're all done and you want to put it somewhere, all you have to do is uh, right click on it and hit copy. And you can paste it into your lab report or to your economics report or anywhere you want. Uh, it's easy as copy and paste. All right, well, that does it. Uh, you've learned how to create graphs from spreadsheet data. And specifically, we learned about pie graphs and column graphs. And you learned how to make them all personal to your, your own liking. Uh, the next thing that you're going to do is attack the assignment that's just below this video uh, on uh, the tech literacy page. So go ahead and give a shot at uh, the assignment.